Hello everyone and welcome back to Part Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I'm going to describe the EDB Experimental Mod Pack. Uh, so these are experimental parts, parts that might be inspired by real things, maybe not, but that I came up with. They're not real rockets, which is another pack that I've released, or real spacecraft, which is yet another pack. And so this is the third distinct pack, uh, zip file if you will, that brings together some things that I have released before. Uh, I think I've released almost everything. Some of it I haven't released before, actually. Uh, but yeah, so these are hypothetical things, and I'm going to go through them one by one. Uh, when you install them, if you've installed these parts before, you'll need to delete them. Uh, because otherwise you'll have duplicate RO configurations because it used to be that uh, when I released them individually I put the RO configuration in the part folder but in this mod pack the RO configuration is now in a separate folder uh, so the folder structure is game data, EDB mods and then under EDB mods there's a part folder and RO configuration folder in the part folder if you don't want a particular part you can just delete it it is a pretty big part pack so and it's going to get bigger. I haven't included everything yet. So, uh, yeah, you can just delete each folder. They're each individually uh, self-encapsulated, if you will. So the first one is Canada Tug. Uh, this was developed for the space shuttle. And we used it to, uh, in pairs, place the ISS modules. And if we extend RCS, it's got extendable RCS ports. And nominal usage of this particular part is by using the propellant-only docking port at one end. Unfortunately, that has the side effect of covering up the little Canadian flag I put on. Uh, this was meant to sort of replace Canada Arm uh, when I felt that I wasn't going to be patient enough to use Canada Arm. Uh, so I wanted to just use tugs which are faster so that's why it is but I didn't want to take credit away from Canada so I gave Canada credit for this so I think the claw is in coupling yeah um, normally I would put tweak scale on the claw but and then I can tweak scale it down to not that low uh, to fit this like that and then that's like a normal way of doing things for me and then if we take a look at some ISS module like Harmony, well, those RCS ports don't really wrap around, do they? It, well, I mean, yeah. I probably should have made this a little bit bigger. Uh, though tweak scale works, if you want it bigger. I thought about maybe making it a nitrogen one, because that would be mildly more realistic. But anyway, that's, that's Canada Tug. Next thing is the ED1 engine, or the ED series of engines. There's a ED1 folder, ED4 folder, and ED6 folder. ED1 folder uh, contains everything to do with ED1 through 3, and then the ED4 folder contains ED4 and 5, and then the ED6 folder contains ED6. So this is the ED1, and this is a new model for it. It is a methane and oxygen 30 kilonewton engine that gets 360 seconds ISP in vacuum. It is pressure fed with lots and lots of ignitions. So it does throttle and that is because it is a lander engine and it is meant to be a reusable lander engine. It was designed in the rocket science series and I showed the numbers, how I got the numbers for it. That's a very simple model but uh, you know we don't have a whole lot of methane oxygen engines that run at 30 kilonewtons so it's handy big nozzle because it's for vacuum but it's a you know it's a pressure fed engine so it's not the most efficient thing ever so that's that uh, it is often paired with verniers which are the ED3 this is an ED3 vernier and this gets uh, 1.6 kilonewtons it also is the RCS thruster on the Shinkansen space plane it's the same engine basically and this gets somewhat lower ISP, 351, and uh, it is not throttleable, but it has a good gimbal range. So that's the ED3. Now you'll be wondering what the ED2 is. The ED2 is the RCS thrusters that go with the system, and there are two versions. There's the normal RCS block, like that, and so this is a 208 Newton 
RCS thrusters and get 343 seconds ISP burning methane and oxygen. And again, that's because they have very low uh, pressure, chamber pressure. And then the conformal RCS. Conformal RCS is just the same RCS block, just covered so that it's more aerodynamic. Okay, uh, so that we can put them on the sides of stages. Now this one is just a normal uh, 208 Newton one, but because I wanted to use it for stage recovery of first stages, there's a higher pressure one. It's not bigger, it's the same size, it's just that the pressure is increased in this one, the ED2X. And so with the higher pressure, it gets higher thrust from the same chamber. And so, well, I wouldn't say from the same chamber, from the same area uh, or volume. And so it's two kilonewtons, but that's a higher pressure uh, system. Okay, so the original pressure was like really low because, I mean, it's vacuum anyway, so you don't need that much. But we're talking about 20 PSI for the original. So easy to increase that for, uh, for a different system and get more thrust out of it. Okay, so that's ED1 through 3. And there are other parts in the ED1 folder that are related to these uh, engines. And one of them is the ED1 service module. So this is a service module that has, unfortunately, the, the thrusters don't look right. So I'm not really thrilled about using it. Um, that's a flaw. <laughs> that's a flaw. And uh, uh, Textures Unlimited is required for this. Otherwise, you'll get more parts that look weird. But in this case, it's just those thruster blocks. And uh, there's also the ED1 lander stage, which comes in multiple flavors, one with the engines, but they have the same flaw as those thrusters and one without, uh, so you can just put the engine. So this lander stage is exactly the same as this service module. See, the service module just has the stuff inside and uh, wrap around uh, solar panel. It, of course, weighs more, but otherwise this is the same, and it was designed with the idea of having two ED1 engines like this. And this service module was designed to have one ED mod, uh, ED1 one like that, and uh, the two verniers like that. Okay, so those are those parts. Now they're this odd square uh, shape, so I needed a part to adapt them. Okay, they're actually under coupling. So there's an ED1 service module coupler for a 4 meter diameter pod, if that's what you've got. Or there is a five meter diameter pod version, so that's uh, adapter for that. And then there are different adapters at the bottom. So this adapts to um, rocket stage of this diameter. I think I said four meter tank. Oops. And this to this Jita rocket, which is three point six. Uh, though it looks like I need to add textures unlimited to fix the way that looks too. That shader is wrong, so that probably needs some fixing. That those are very all very custom parts. You probably won't use any of the stages. You probably just use the engines and make your own stage. So that's the ED1 folder, and then the ED4 folder contains larger methane oxygen engines. Uh, this is the ED4 engine used on the Shinkansen system, and it is a 1,000 kilonewton engine burning methane and oxygen. It is designed uh basically like a it's a gas generator engine it's like if you turned a merlin engine into a methane oxygen engine and then it has a vacuum variant because we needed that for the shinkansen system and on shinkansen it actually ignites the engine and extends the nozzle in flight so it's a deployable extension vacuum engine that gets better isp so the isps for these uh 343.7 ISP in, well, uh, this is a sea level engine, but that's why it gets in vacuum. And then the V has a mode 2, and that gets 373 maximum. And that's the, that's the kilonewtons thrust. Keep in mind that uh, it, it, the nozzle ratio might be deceptive. It actually curves in. This is a insulating jacket here. The actual throat is 
much thinner. So it is a very large nozzle. And that's the ED4 engine. The ED5 is a little pack. It's a, another gas generator methane oxygen engine. As you can see, 96 kilonewtons. That's for both nozzles. It's uh, 48 each. Uh, that can be increased, uh, though I haven't done it here. This pack contains some fuel. It's meant for uh, basically for touchdown on Mars, and then you just dump these packs off. Uh, you could use them for liftoff too if you need to, but basically these are disposable packs for a touchdown situation. It could be used for other things. And yep, uh, fairly light overall because th they're not that powerful. And efficiency wise, also not very efficient. Uh, 337.2 vacuum. So not really what you want to use as your main thing, but handy sometimes. So that's the ED5. And then the ED6 is a Hydrolox engine used on the Kasei rocket. And so uh, I don't know why it's looking a little bit dull around here. It should look a little bit shinier. Uh, I remember it being shinier. So I'll have to review the textures in limited setting. Uh, so that's the ED6 and it is a 3,924 kilonewton engine. So a really big hydrogen oxygen engine. Uh, it's sort of like if the RS-68 was good. <laughs> uh, I don't like the RS-68 very much. It's a gas generator, a Hydrolox engine, fairly heavy, 5.661. It's not like it's got a thrust weight ratio over 100 or anything. It's like 70 something. But that's still better than the RS-68's thrust weight ratio. So uh, handy. And it's got a vacuum variant with a extremely long nozzle. Uh, not the best curvature on that nozzle, but uh, this is not a retracting nozzle. And that gets 451 with that huge nozzle. So yeah, uh, and more than 4,000 kilonewtons. So those are for, were for the Kasei rocket. If you've seen that. I'm not giving you the rocket parts. You're going to have to build your own darn rocket. Um, next up is something completely different. And that's the donut. Or the Pac-Man system. Actually, I think I made it Pac-Man. Pac-Man engine recovery system. There's one that doesn't have a gap. And that seems to have a shader problem. And there is one that does have a gap. That does not have a shader problem. Or maybe it does. I might have to fix these. Anyway, what they're really meant for, and there, I think there's a part in the ED4. Yeah, there's another ED4 part that I forgot about. So another part in the ED4 folder is this ED4 booster tank. And that is meant to, and again, used with the Shinkansen system. It is meant to use an ED4 engine at the bottom, uh, in like that. But before I put that on, I'm going to get my Pac-Man. And the Pac-Man encapsulation device, and I'll, I'll make a note to fix the shader on here, has not only a gap there, which is important, but also tweak scale. It also has RCS thrusters, but in this case, those aren't useful. In another case, they would be if you're just uh, returning to stage like uh, maybe Vulcan would have it. Anyway, the goal is that this closes over. Uh, I'm sorry about the things. Uh, t I'll, I'm going to use Textures Unlimited to fix the shader. That's why Textures Unlimited is required. Otherwise, it's going to look like this or something. Uh, but anyway, it closes over the engine. And then this tank also has floats. So it still needs parachutes. You'll have to put real shoots parachutes on it, but it's meant to be a recoverable booster. And of course, you'd have to put a uh, decoupler on it. Very shiny and all, but anyway, so that's the idea behind that. The Pac-Man system I also used to recover three, you know, sized much larger, to recover three F1 engines that I placed at the bottom of the shuttle's external tank to replace the SRBs. So. In one video, I had the shuttle with the external tank, but placed an additional fuel tank underneath the external tank and placed three F1 engines. And this was able to recover those F1 engines if you 
or size it much larger. Anyway, and of course, uh, in that case, you didn't need a heat shield because uh, it was coming from relatively low velocity. It's where the SRBs decouple anyway. Okay, so that does it for the EDSR. And next up is my particle bed engines. So the Timberwind engines, there's a stock RO1, and then there's the Timberwind 250, which, let me get rid of these other parts, uh, which is a 2,500 kilonewton uh, nuclear engine. And so its stats is, well, 2,451 kilonewton, 250 tons, 980 vacuum ISP, 60 ignitions, hydrogen, and uh, that's it. And then there's also a smaller one. This is a 45 ton engine or 450 kilonewtons thereabouts. And then a 75 ton engine or 750 kilonewtons. So uh, this one is five tons, 8.3 tons and 18 tons. So very heavy engine there, but they burn just hydrogen and they get really good ISP. This sort of, the, the largest diameter You'd have to be big, uh, building a fairly large rocket to justify. Uh, these other ones, the frame that I put on is probably about the size of tank you should use. So if you find yourself making a thinner stage than that, you're probably doing something wrong anyway. Uh, in the case of the largest one, well, <laughs> it's pretty large. Anyway, so those are the Timberwind engines and they're in the future tech folder. And then there's the propellant only docking port I made a long, long time ago. And that is a special use sort of thing. Uh, so this is an androgynous propellant only docking port. And the idea behind this was that uh, if we get another one, they can only go together one way. And that's like this. And so it would ensure that the propellant tubes if we, um, oh, can it not animate those? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, the propellant tubes match up every time. And so there's securing latches and the cone is meant to, it's sort of like a rubberized cone with rollers. And so it's meant to sort of slip into the slot on the other side to ensure a good connection. There's also little cameras to eye the the target on the opposite side in both cases. So they go together like that, and then they secure. So that's a sort of complicated little docking port. You don't have to put them together like that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna stop you from docking them like this, incidentally. <laughs> so uh, at least I don't, I don't remember if I managed to implement that properly. But anyway, that was the idea. And so that's the propellant only docking port and it was mainly used in conjunction with a truss. And that was the truss for the ion ships, truss 10 meters. So there's a folder called trusses and basically it's uh, the trusses are meant to go with these propellant only docking ports and it would feed the propellant through, though I, I don't actually show the tubes inside. And you could have other stuff hanging off like solar panels. It's mainly for an ion ship with huge solar panels. So the truss would have the solar panels on the side here. Anyway, so those are those two parts. That's the prop dock folder and the trusses folder. There's also a recycler. And this is for water recovery. This is based on the ISS recycling system. It's a lot less shiny than I thought it ought to be. I might want to change that. Okay, uh, but wastewater to water plus waste. A very standard recycler system. I've used it on many vessels and uh, the numbers might still take some tweaking. It always seems to not do what I want it to do. So anyway, ISS water recovery system is the part 2.1 tons, which should, uh, with some spares, it says one set of spares uh, should be approximately what the ISS has, though I'm still for some reason, I know the numbers for how the ISS system works, but somehow TAC life support, it doesn't turn out the way I expect. So it's it's really weird. And now there's a satellite deployment system that I made. Uh, you guys probably have forgotten all about this. 
Mm. And that's this OMSAT satellite system. And that could... Uh, the shading on that is weird too. Okay, so, but the idea about this is, I mean, inside looks fine, but it's got solar panels, it's got tanks, a hydrogen oxygen tank, and it's meant to go with an, a BE-7 engine really at the bottom. So it's got RCF thrusters that use hydrogen and oxygen, and uh, actually right now it's got, uh, I take it back, it's got RCF thrusters that use MMH and NTO it looks like. Uh, but the textures on this could do with some work and you can fill up with any fuel it looks like uh, even though the shape of the tanks are clearly for hydrogen and oxygen I left that ambiguous so whatever stage but the idea is that you would use these decouplers well first of all there's a stacker so that's a stacker and then there are these decouplers that would decouple off these satellites it's a little bit hard to put it together, unfortunately. But these satellites, and I'm going to temporarily... Oh, well. Um, I'll put it there. And But these satellites have a special OMSAT engine. Let me make sure that, that the engine goes with that instead of the decoupler. All right. So you can put four in a tier like this, but you're not limited to just four because you can create more tiers. So I could just add another set of four, and another set of four, and another set of four, and you can deploy as many as you want. And then the decoupler releases the satellite. So the satellite comes out, and uh, unfortunately I can't, uh, can I run the, okay, the animation. Uh, you see, it extends the solar panels like this. So then it becomes a little satellite with a little engine at the back, and the RCS thrusters, I don't know if you can see, the RCS thrusters are here carefully placed so that they sort of don't blast the solar panels. But yeah, it's got RCS thrusters in the back here. Maybe you can see them better back here. And yeah, that's the OMSAT system. So that is in the SAT depth folder. Next up, the shuttle engine returner, also known as the shuttle mice. So returner, ah, okay. So there were two models of shuttle mouse. There's this one, the old model, which I don't quite like very much, but it's built around uh, bringing back three SSMEs. It's basically the back end of the shuttle with a nose on it. And it's not quite as nifty, but if you want to just turn the regular shuttle stack into a reusable you know, launcher with uh, payload on top, this is the way to do it. So there's that version, and then there's uh, this version, which is the, oh, I guess that doesn't work. This is the improved version with just a uh, slot for two, but that allows for fitting it onto SLS uh, with one on each side in order to bring back the four engines. Now, it requires additional control surfaces. This is only the fixed part. Uh, nominally it'd have an additional surface on the outside, some body flaps back here, and a fin or two on the top. You'll have to figure out the best configuration for that. And then of course landing gear at the bottom. So that it doesn't include all that, it's just a shell. And it doesn't really need all this fuel. I put as much fuel as uh, would fit, but really it can be under fuel like this. And it alone is uh, 6.8 tons. Well, it's 5.2 uh, tons when I underfuel it like this. So it's not light. And with the two engines, it's much heavier. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have much of a wing, but it has some wing. But it's rather heavy for what it is. So it's got RCS built in, of course, and that uses MMH and NTO. Okay, and if you wanted to... Uh, turn something in uh, turn the external tank of the shuttle into a launch vehicle this folder the shuttle engine returner uh, Folder also has an adapter for that However, you're gonna have to figure out uh, you might need to put a node at the top of the external tank either by configuration or by using one of the surface mount um, thingamajigs you know, like a cubic octag or 
one of these radial attachment points. But otherwise, uh, this is meant to fit over the cone of the external tank in order to adapt it for a fairing that would have a payload. And of course, I tried to match the color to at least one of the colors that the shell external tank had. So that's the... Um, well, let's see. Shell derived launcher ET adapter is what it's called. So you can probably find it like that. Okay, next up, surface bases. That's the next folder down. And uh, first and foremost, surface bases actually contains the orange. So if you wanted the orange, the orange comes in the surface base uh, folder. So that is the orange bent for uh, landing bases on the surface of the moon specifically. So, and it'll land the base and then try to return to orbit as long as the base is sufficiently low mass. And so you're gonna have to add a docking port to either side. Otherwise the solar panels work. That's a radiator on the opposite side. RCS ports work and the thrusters work. So that's all good. Uh, the Delta V on its own is 7,000 because it's just uh, it's got, uh, I think the oxygen tanks in the middle and the methane tank is on the outside. I always forget which one I calculated as the uh, oxygen tank and which one the methane tank. But this is another oxygen methane system. Okay, so keep that in mind. Could be refueled by a starship if you want, or other things. And so that's the orange, but there's also the regolith base. Still a work in progress. So to find it, you type regolith and the regolith surface base, uh, measuring in at seven tons with its supplies, including a fuel cell because getting power on the moon is tricky because uh, of the dark side. Uh, pile regolith works like that. And you can see I've uh, sort of dulled it a little bit more compared to when I showed it off previously. So it's not as shiny with the regolith and the regolith when you do the animation will pile one at a time slowly not all at the same time the way we have it here and there is the legs the legs will not get in the way of the actual regolith the regolith actually doesn't have colliders right at the bottom so the collider for uh, the bottom layer starts about here otherwise they have colliders but the collider for the bottom layer starts about here-ish and that's so that the kerbals can bump into it. But if the ground is a little bit uneven, it'll still work out. Okay. So anyway, that's the surface base folder. That's the orange and that base module. I haven't made the Mars version yet. Next folder is the pair. And that's the Grusha spacecraft, which I'm actually very proud of. I like this a lot, actually. And it's meant to pair with pair. <laughs> anyway, um, it is meant to uh, match up with the RD0410 engine that I made. So you're not only getting the Timberwind nuclear engine, you're also getting this RD0410, which is um, the engine that the Soviets got first along in as far as nuclear engines. There are different possibilities. This is the initial test subject and then I made two versions that better matched the NERVA's stats because this is wildly inefficient in terms of thrust to weight ratio. It's only got 3.5 tons of thrust on two tons of engine mass but those were the real stats. 910 vacuum ISP, plenty of ignitions because I don't know about ignition limits with nuclear engines. Uh, but there is a version that's lighter and this matches the thrust to weight ratio of NERVA and then there's a version that just has more thrust. Uh, well, I mean, it's a little bit lighter than the two-ton one, but it has more thrust to get the uh, thrust. It, it sort of evens out how much I reduce the engine mass and how much I increase the thrust to get the right thrust to weight ratio. So that is another option for your nuclear purposes. And of course, this is a huge hydrogen tank yeah, and the, the pod is included. This is just one part, but that's the pair. So, yep. I really need to figure out how best to put that to use because I like it a lot. 
And so there's the trusses folder, which I already talked about. There's the old tugs. The old tugs are also methylox tugs. So if you want methylox, somebody asked me whether I had made methylox engines before. And I've made a lot of them, including the Raptor and the BE-4, of course, for the real rockets back. But then the first ones that I ever made were with uh, these tugs. And these tugs come in a variety of sizes, as you can see. Um, the big ones are rather big, 14 tons. The small ones are 7.4 tons. And if we take a look at the engine stats, 30 kilonewtons, that's all four nozzles together, so there's 7.5 each. And that's true of all of uh, Well, uh, this version has the thrusters on the back, so they're 15 kilonewtons each in that case. And then uh, these have four facing that ways. There are uh, mounting points on the front, on the back, and on the inside here. They're really meant to grab stuff on the inside. And then there are CS thrusters all around. They're just uh, one, you know, mile thick, all-in-one tug. Uh, though I sort of like the Canada tugs better these days. These are overkill a lot of the time. And their initial thing, so I didn't really calculate the volume of the methane and oxygen tanks per se, so... And then the little purple things are the helium tanks for pressurization. But, yeah, they're sort of haphazard and not the most thought out things ever. Next folder is the wrap SM, which is the wraparound service module. And I think wraparound will bring that up. So the wraparound service module is like this. It is meant to take a payload inside uh, and then fit a Orion capsule on the top. And the goal is, well, really what, it, uh, except there's, there's a sort of exception to that, and that's that we want a docking port heat shield. Heat shield with docking compartment. So it's this heat shield that would fix uh, fit a flat 5 meter pod and the heat shield has a cleverly designed compartment here where you can place a docking port and the heat shield panels slide in and out like that. This was based on an idea for the manned orbital laboratory which uh, the MOL had a heat shield that had a trap door in it so that they could get into the laboratory part of the thing from the command module that you know I don't know the specifics of how they would make that work there's also a Soviet idea um, that was the whatchamacallit TKS system the TKS system had a similar heat shield that opened up with a, a way to get into the main lab if you will but in this case it was for a Mars uh, mission so they get into the lander like that, and the lander would sit in, inside this bay, and there would be the inflatable heat shield at the bottom. So, But the idea is that the inflatable heat shield would be down here, and would go around like that. The inflatable heat shield can be scaled up as necessary if it turns out that's important. But pod on top service module like this and lander inside and the purpose of the service module is to bring the pod back uh, if or contain whatever fuel it needs uh, for return though normally you'd probably want more space for return than could be provided by a pod so depends how you feel about that but anyway that was the general idea for the wraparound service module and those uh, the heat shield and the service module part itself come with it so last folder finally we've made it is very simple it's just the xenon tank and this was used most famously in my Mars colonization series so the xenon the Mars mission xenon tank this is the large version and it really should have tweak skill on it because I think I made a smaller version. But it's just a huge tank with lots of xenon in. Uh, dry mass is based on procedural tanks. So yeah, that's it. Those are the parts in the experimental parts pack from the EDB. And if there are any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. 
and I'll see you guys next time.